Further debate? The member from Ottawa Vanier. Madame la Présidente, il me fait plaisir de participer au débat ce matin sur l'élimination du régime de plafonnement et d'échange, le projet de loi numéro 4. I view my role in this parliament as a member of opposition as trying to help the government produce the best legislative product that is possible. Personally, I am convinced that a cap and trade program was a good idea, but I know you're committed to eliminating it. And my suggestion today is to do it in an orderly fashion. So I have uh, five recommendations for this government to actually uh, improve on the, on the bill. So I'm not discuss, discuss, I won't be using my time to discuss whether cap and trade should be uh, abolished. I know you're committed to it, but how it should be done. So we know that uh, Ontario now has the lowest unemployment rate in 20 years. It is the best performing economy in the G7. It's some of its cities, Toronto and Ottawa as well, where I come from, are surpassing many of the US cities in terms of tech industries. And it has been a place uh, that has stopped other jurisdictions in terms of foreign investment. So let's keep it this way. And to do that, I think, we have to remove as much as possible uncertainty and prevent chaos. So predictability is a key ingredient to a stable economic uh, climate, and I think it is the obligation of this government to, as much as possible, prevent and minimize uncertainty, particularly at a crucial time like this time, where we have uncertainty because of the trade disputes and the imposition of tariffs, which could wreak havoc in Ontario. The government wants to uh, uh, implement its par uh, platform, fair enough, but it must do so responsibly. It must respect the rule of law, respect investors, and respect the people who have relied on existing laws to make investment and programs to uh, upgrade their homes. And that was part, uh, a little bit, what my friend uh, and colleague from the Algoka Manitoulin talked about the impact that this has had. So my five suggestions for the government. Number one, lay out and present your climate plan, climate change plan right now, or at least before September 1st. September 1st is the deadline that the federal government has imposed. You should be clear to investors and to Ontarians about what is the climate change plan of the province of Ontario now. So do it now. Number two, Use, use the funds generated by the latest auction, which was held in May before the election, for the legal purposes for which they were obtained. Number three, amend the provisions of the Act to be more transparent about how you will limit compensation. Don't do it in a regulation, or at least publish your regulation now. Be honest about to the investors about exactly how you want to limit compensation. Number four, obey the Environmental Bill of Rights. And number five, extend the deadline on the green on contracts. Too many people relied on this, made good faith investment, and they just need to be protected for a few more months so that at least they don't lose money. So let me explain a little bit why I believe that these five measures would actually uh, ensure an orderly transition. First, the necessity of a climate change plan. I think we've been discussing in the, for the last two days how much climate change is the challenge of our generation. It's all of our responsibility. We know that the cost of doing nothing on climate change are far greater than the cost of doing something. Doing nothing means incurring greater expenses when extreme weather affects the people of our province and our economy. Floods, fire, excessive heat, intense storms. The human costs to climate change are also extreme. People have to flee their homes. Many predict that there will be a lot of environmental migrants, people whose communities will be submerged and will have to relocate. So it is certainly our moral duty to uh, confront climate change, but it's also our economic duty to do so. 
When President Trump decided that he was backing out of the Paris Accord, that did not change the commitment of many of the governors. Why? Because we know that the economy of the future will aim to be carbon neutral. To be competitive internationally, our economy needs to take on and be technologically savvy, but also have a low carbon emission. Because in the future, it's already starting, many, many uh, companies, many uh, uh, provinces, many uh, countries, both uh, or states in the US and certainly uh, countries in, the U in the Europe, will want to buy a product with low carbon emission. That will be valued as, as, as a product. The point of Green On and the point of the investment was to lead us progressively to greening the economy, to a low carbon economy, to progressively incentivize all corporations to move in that direction. So I caution the government in abandoning this support for a greening of the economy. Do it for moral reason, but do it for economic reason. We want Ontario to be, continue to be productive and to be competitive on the international scale by having the right incentives to be at that type of investment and, and contributing in the new type of economy where we will all be in 10 years. I know that the Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks indicated that he's not a climate change denier, and I believe him since, like many of the others, have signed, he signed the People's Guarantee, uh, the previous conservative plan that supported the uh, carbon tax. So now, here we are today. If the plan is not cap and trade, if it's not carbon tax, what is it? When you talk about targets, we have no information about the process to, give the, to get to the targets. We don't have no information about the enforcement of these targets. I think Ontarians need to know, and businesses Businesses need to know exactly what will be the plan. The bill in front of us say that there's an obligation to put forward a plan. It doesn't give a time frame, and it does not give some, uh, some realty to that plan. Number two, my second point is use the money that was collected in last auction for the purpose for which it was collected. So section 11 of the bill in front of us proposes to move the money from the auction, the May auction, before the election, to a cap and trade wind down account and pay the cost of the wind down, the limited compensation that is offered. I urge the minister to reconsider. By law, the money from the May auction should be distributed for the Green On initiatives and fund school, uh, uh, school investments, uh, social housing uh, uh, investment, and the hospital green initiatives. It's just wrong to distort this money and repurpose it. In my view, this money was held in trust for the Green On initiatives that included support for the energy conservation initiatives of school, hospital, and social housing. Number three, uh, section 8 of the bill provides for a similar mechanism as we've seen in the cancellation of the white, white pine projects, that is a formula for compensation that excludes certain heads of damages and then further reserve the right to the government to limit its liability or the compensation by regulation. And further, the government is trying to immunize itself from any lawsuit. This obviously will be litigated, but fundamentally, I think that's my point here. It leaves investors with a bad taste in their mouth. The government is using its legislative power to limit the money to which they would be normally entitled. Corporations who participated in good faith in a cap and trade program and made an investment based on the law of the time should not be later prejudiced by a change of government. This is scary for the rule of law, but it's also scary for the business climate of this province because it raises the issue what other contracts and what other changes will affect businesses. When is the government going to next limit their, their compensation to which they are, entire, uh, they are entitled? So my suggestion here is that the government publish right now the regulation that they intend to uh, implement so that people know what is the limit on compensation that the government is envisaging. 
tell the business right now, if they want to invest in Ontario, they need certainty. And I think it's just fair for the government to be upfront about the way it wants to conduct businesses. Number four, obey the Environmental Bill of Rights. The government did not post a regulation that canceled the allowance under the cap and trade on July 3rd. It does not deny that the regulation had an impact on environmental policy, so it should have been uh, published on the environmental registry, but rather it responded to the environmental commissioner in the following way. It says, we did not have to consult in accordance with the Environmental Bill of Rights because the election was a process of public participation equivalent to the Environmental Bill of Rights or the Environmental Re Registry. But that's not correct. The Environmental Registry allows people to comment specifically on a, a proposal, mm -hmm. like the cancellation of the allowances. For a government that wants to uh, listen to the people and wants to consult, I think it's really difficult to accept the way in which they interpreted the Environmental Bill of Rights. Again, we need clarity. Either you believe in the Environmental Bill of Rights or you don't. And if you do, then you cannot put forth interpretation that got it of any meaning. Because in, if we follow your meaning, the one that you put forward there, that means that anything that's in a platform, for example, the commitment to the ring of fire, all this, this promise would mean that there would not be any publication under the Environmental Bill of Rights of the implementation of the Ring of Fire. So that's wrong. You know, the, environment, uh, the Environmental Bill of Rights is part of the legislative armature of this province and it should be respected. So I think we need, I, I would like to have confirmation from the part of the government that they are committed to upholding the Environmental Bill of Rights and will continue to do so and not gut it from its meaning. Number five, I think like my colleague from Algoma Manitoulin, I urge the government to extend the deadline on the green on contracts. Many people in my riding and throughout Ontario are caught short. They have made contracts to buy new windows, to install a new furnace. We have you know, installers that want to do the work, they just can't do it within the deadlines. And all these people are being cut short for no reason. Installers had hired extra help to do these contracts. Now it cannot be done in time and it's all canceled. I beg the minister to extend the deadlines by a few months. The money is there in the account. Don't let these poor folks that relied on the existing laws uh, to make investment and now be cut short. That's just unfair. That doesn't make sense. So uh, I want to say, Mr. Uh, Madame la Présidente, that I continue to think that you know, environmental uh, protection is really important for Ontario and it's important for Ontarians. It's the challenge of our days and we need to continue to support that. So in my view, the government has also an obligation to be clear about its next plan. You know, it's good for all of us if we know what the future looks like. It is good for the investors, it, it's good for, uh, for Ontarians to know what's ahead of them. And that's what I urge the government to do. In conclusion, Madame la Présidente, et uh, je vais parler un peu en français pour quelques minutes, Il est important que le démantèlement du programme de plafonnement et d'échange que le gouvernement Ford propose n'envenime pas les choses, qu'il ne fasse pas de victimes innocentes. Le gouvernement devrait respecter les contrats déjà entrés de bonne foi et ne pas utiliser son pouvoir législatif ou exécutif pour limiter l'application ou l'indemnisation de personnes ou de compagnies. My five suggestions that I'm presenting today aim to make a better legislative product. I think the purpose of to be in the opposition is not to be only a naysayer, it's to help the government take its, its possibility and, but raise to the challenge. And on the same side, I would say on the other side, you don't have to be just yes men and yes women. You know, you have to take your responsibility seriously and ask good questions. We all have uh, ability here to critically assess what is in front of us and make suggestions for improvement. 
and we should not diminish the ability and the importance of debate and deliberation for a better product. So my, my suggestions here are that we should look carefully and evaluate this bill, not only for what it seeks to do, which is to, you know, to respond to the platform of the conservative, but with the long-term impact. So I repeat my five suggestions. Number one, be clear about what exactly is the climate change plan. If you are going to put targets, what is the process to achieve these targets? What will be the enforcement for these targets? Be clear as well as to the necessity and what is the impact on the greening of our economy. How important it is not only to support uh, uh, the climate change, not only to uh, protect the environment, but also to position Ontario's businesses competitively in the world. That's my first uh, request. My second request, and this I, I say, I think the proceeds of the May auction ought to be regulated, ought to be used for the purpose for which they were uh, uh, claimed. They were in trust for the green initiatives. They should not be repurposed mm -hmm. for the wind down, for to pay uh, the wind down of the cap and trade. I, I understand that this uh, will create havoc on the other side, but I ask for a response to this. Why not? Why not uh, continue with the way in which, I, in, in my view, it was held in trust uh, for uh, the purposes for which it was, it was collected? And uh, third, I, I urge the government to be transparent about the way it wants to limit compensation. I think it's important for all businesses and the business climate in Ontario to have that. Number four, as I say, I think the Environmental Bill of Rights is important for all Ontarians and we need clarity. Either you believe in it or you don't. And if you don't, and if, if part of your uh, unspoken platform is to get rid of the Environmental Bill of Rights, then say it right now. If not, then I think you have to obey the, 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 not only the spirit, but the provisions of the Environmental Bill of Rights all the time and not gut it of its uh, interpretation. And finally, as we've said around this house, don't have poor people that made good faith investment lose their money because there has been a change of government. Mm. So on this note, merci beaucoup, Madame la Présidente.